Hey, it's Nathan, and today I'm just gonna do a math grad school update thing because apparently people enjoy watching those, or at least they watch them, so. Academically, I think things have been going pretty okay. I've had a handful of exams so far, and my first one was in analysis, and that just like really threw me off because it was probably the worst I ever felt about a math test, and like from me sitting in front of the test, probably the worst I've ever done on a math test by my own standards, uh, in that like I've I left like two questions basically blank. Uh, that turned out okay. Like I, I scored above average in the class and that sort of like got me to a point where with academics and grad school, I've been trying to think about things a little bit differently. And so instead of being solely worried about like what grade I'm getting on a particular assignment, that's still like a part of it. Uh, but I ask more like vague questions that don't necessarily pin me down as a sole human and more talk, like think about like collectively how I'm doing amongst my peers and also um, just what my understanding is of the material. So there's like three questions that sort of get me to the point of like, oh, academically things are okay. Uh, the first one of those is on this particular assignment or exam, did you score above average or average? And um, for the most part, that has been a yes. And uh, because everything is online and it's all posted, all the grade distributions are posted, I can sort of figure that out pretty easily. Um, so that's like the only thing that I think about grade wise. I don't necessarily think about like, oh, like if this was just raw score, I would have gotten a, like a B or a C or an A or whatever the letter grade value is, because I don't think that's a really good way of thinking about how you're doing in grad school, at least so far. I don't know. I'm only two thirds of the way through my first semester, so I basically still don't know anything. So yeah, anyway, um, so that's the first question I've been sort of like putting out there every time I get a grade back. And then for the like non-grade oriented questions, I've been asking myself, like, do I recall any of the major points of things that I submitted? So. Uh, that's more of a question of like, did I actually understand what I was doing or was I up until like 2 a.m. just trying to put something together that I could submit because the next day was going to be super hectic and I didn't have enough time to think about uh, what was actually in the assignment. For the most part, that has been a yes, I do have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. There's been a few um, assignments and analysis where I've just been like hit by a truck and... Uh, just like, whoa. Analysis has been a little bit more difficult uh, when answering that question because it's all been asynchronous and um, the lectures are like super long, like very, very long, longer than it would be if it were just a normal class. And so uh, there isn't necessarily like a great amount of time to sit there and watch the lecture, which is something I should be doing. I should be doing. But I'm still doing pretty okay with that class. And so I guess the great thing about this second question is that whenever I go to answer it, it gives me a really good idea of whether or not I need to put that material on a list of things that I need to focus more heavily on before an exam. Uh, to go back to the analysis example, uh, there were two theorems that we covered. Uh, one of them is Ergarov's and the other one is Lucin's theorem. And I'll just put those like up here for those of you that are interested. And I just like totally missed the mark on the assignment that was supposed to be about these things. Just the proofs to me were like very weird um, from an analysis standpoint. And it was just because there were lots of like epsilon like things running around just more so than usual. Cause there's always like an epsilon thing running around in analysis proof. But uh, yeah, so like that's an example of something that like didn't go super well and I've had to spend a little bit more time on it because it didn't go so well in the homework. That being said, the the last question is also sort of related to figuring out like what I need to focus on before exams. And that is, well, when reading comments that I get back on homework, if there are any, because sometimes there haven't been any. But anyway, when I get comments back on homework, um, there's like three levels of errors. There are 
the errors where you like totally miss the mark and you have no idea, like the professor thinks you have no idea what's going on, um, which is, which I've already mentioned just happened <laughs> to me in this semester. Um, and then the second one is just like small errors that you should have caught when you were revising stuff and you just didn't. And then that third type of error, which is a, is different for everyone, um, may or may not happen. You may, may, may or may not experience this, uh, but it's a failure to cater to the preferences of the professor. And um, that one's like sort of loaded uh, because, you know, some, some professors aren't super particular, others are super particular. I have like two very different professors currently. Analysis isn't, at least, based on everything I've gotten back so far, isn't super particular about things. Um, whereas algebra, we get like a two page style guide. And so that last type of error is a little weird because you would think that, you know, if you present a proof that is in similar length and has the same logical content as another proof, that they would be like valued at the same amount from a scoring perspective. But that's not necessarily the case, especially if you have someone who is very particular, uh, because usually you're presented with like multi-part problems and at like part three or four, they want you to think about something in a very particular way. And so if you approach it in a different way, you sort of like miss the lesson of that problem. And so that can be a little frustrating when writing up assignments because I feel like Sometimes I'm more focused on what that particular professor wants instead of what the mathematical content of the problem is. Um, so that's a thing that I'm dealing with too. And so from like a grades and what feedback I'm getting back from my professors, I feel pretty good about what I'm doing right now, uh, despite some of the little frustrations that can come up. Um, in terms of, whoa. That was, that dog was. So aside from the purely academic things, in terms of workload, grad school has also been pretty, I guess, okay for me. Uh, I think the the best part about going out into the, the real world and working a pretty demanding job where I was, you know, expected at odd times of the week to be up in the middle of the night for two to four hours doing work and then going to bed for like, anywhere from like two to five hours and then be expected to be in work for a full eight to 12 plus hour day. And so because I had such a demanding job before grad school and probably the biggest advertisement for taking a very demanding job for about a year or so after graduating from undergrad before going to grad school in whatever field you want to do is that the demanding workload from that job has totally and utterly prepared me for whatever grad school is going to throw at me from a workload perspective, which is great. Uh, it means that like when there's a lot of stuff to do, like um, last Thursday when I had to teach two recitation sections and I had to hold office hours and then I had an exam right after that that I had to drive to school to take in person and then I had to give a seminar talk for an undergraduate research experience that I'm uh, helping out with, or was asked to help out with, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, when I have, like, that laundry list of things, that means I'm gonna be, like, up at six, starting to work from six, and then go all the way to 7 p.m., like, it's not a huge deal, because I have worked those, like, 14 plus hour days, <laughs> uh, at, a job that I didn't enjoy at the end of it. I did enjoy it at the beginning, but like near the end of it, I was not a happy camper. But anyway, I've, I've done the same amount of work in a much worse environment with less sleep and uh, working longer hours. So 10 out of 10 would recommend doing something very overwhelming before going to grad school so that you don't get overwhelmed by the workload that grad school can throw at you. And that's not to say that I haven't gotten overwhelmed at various points in the semester with just grad school. It's just that I'm not necessarily overwhelmed by like, I have to turn in this assignment or I'm getting this grade or things like that. Um, I did have that 
after my like freak out with my first analysis exam, but since I've sort of reframed uh, my thought process on my academics, that hasn't really happened yet since then. And the things that I'm more overwhelmed with now are more on the side of like, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to feel good about where I am in my life. And the reason for that is that I'm doing a lot of the things that I've wanted to do. I get to make videos on the internet and I also get to go to grad school to pursue a math PhD. Both are things that I've wanted to do for a very, very long time and didn't think would happen for me, um, especially when I was working that job <laughs> before uh, coming to grad school. And so I, I guess there are times where I don't necessarily feel great about where I am in my life and or that I don't deserve to be where I am in my life. And I generally avoid making videos when I feel like that, which is why there's been sort of like a blackout on this channel for the past two months. Um, and I guess the, the umbrella term for what I feel is imposter syndrome. But I also think that that is um, something that a lot of people lean on to emotionally procrastinate from dealing with things that they're going through. So I don't want to just like say like, oh, I have imposter syndrome, haha, <laughs> relatable. At least for me, the like imposter part of that comes from like being that I have most of the things that I could reasonably want to have at this point in my life, which is very awesome. Um, sometimes I feel that I'm maybe neglecting both the things that I need and the things that I find are important to me. And when that happens, it's very easy for me to like, sort of like get into a mindset of like, maybe I'm not doing what is best for me at this point in my life and maybe I should be thinking about not being where I am. Um, which is, which is, sounds like eh on, on the face of it, but I, it's, it's real for me. So I'm just, I'm just sharing how grad school is going for me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to say about that. Overall, in the grand scheme of things, despite the past two months being sort of like mentally eh, uh, grad school has been going pretty good for me, uh, and I do feel a little bit better about where I'm at, and I have been putting a little bit less pressure on myself to feel good about where I am in my life, because I can just feel good about it, uh, <laughs> uh, which is, I mean, kind of like a weird antithetical thing to say uh, after that whole spiel. Um, I don't know what I just said might be confusing to people and honestly things are okay and I am doing well. Anyway, with uh, with that mumbling mess, I think this is a good place to just uh, end this update and yeah. So if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more of these, you know, me talking about me videos or any of the other math stuff, that I do on this channel. You can subscribe for more of that and give this video a thumbs up. It tells me if you want me to talk more about me on this channel, which I, I, I can do. Uh, but yeah, anyway, as always, I am Nathan. This one was Chocolates, and I will see you next time.